first. We start off with the big market rally that kicked off the week. The S&P posting its highest close in over two months. The Dow up almost 4%, its biggest gain since the start of April. The Nasdaq now up 3% in 2020, just 6% away from its all-time high. A far cry from where we were just a few weeks ago. But do you believe in this rally, Guy? Well, hi, Mel. Hi, Guy. How are you doing? So, I mean, no, you know the answer to that with me. I don't believe in it at all. But, uh, you know, I've also been wrong now for the last couple of weeks. And this move from 2800 to current levels has me scratching my head. And, you know, again, kudos to Tim, who has said uh, consistently that the pain trade is higher. But, you know, I think not only was, you know, the hope of a vaccine in the in the in the blanket of a phase one promising trial part of this. But, you know, the, the 60 minutes piece last night with Jerome Powell, which was. You know, for somebody like me, just stomach turning when asked, you know, where are they getting this money from? Are you just pulling it out of thin air? And his answer is, well, that's one way of putting it. I mean, that was a lot of this as well. So, listen, I see what happened today. I get it. I understand people want to be hopeful. But now I really <clears throat> think we're ahead of ourselves, Mel. In his pre-release testimony, he also says effectively that they are far from running out of ammunition. Um, that, of course, coming much later in the day, Tim. The question is, though, how much of this rally is actually baking in the realization of that vaccine, as Guy had mentioned, it's phase one. There's phase two. There's phase three. Yep. There's a lot of time right. still ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think if you're if you're banking the rally on the news on Moderna, is it's something that you have to be really careful about. Um, when you think about what Powell was saying and that which was turning Guy's stomach, uh, the fact that he's saying, hey, let's not have Washington worry about this. We'll worry about deficits later. We's, we've always been a net spender. Um, I, that, that's actually, that is bothersome because I, I think uh, to assume that this is the same context in which the U.S. has run a deficit uh, is, is, you know, they're, they're apples and oranges. Having said all that, think about the market has done since 10 a.m. Thursday morning. We've rallied 7% on the S&P. So think about all the periods we've had uh, during this, this, this chaos, this crisis, COVID-19. This is about as strong as a move as we've had, and we've taken it right back up to that 2950 level. Uh, I know Carter's on later in the show. I'll let the, the chartists talk about this. Um, but if you think about where we are in terms of fundamentals, what people are trying to do, and, and they did it today with value over growth at a time when Friday's news on Google and antitrust, Huawei on Friday, China retaliates overnight, or at least the jawboning on that has only escalated. Um, so it's been kind of a driver for these industrial names and these underperformers and these, these value names, if I may, uh, late cycle cyclicals that have actually outperformed over the last couple of days. So extraordinary relative to this market move. And I, I don't think it's just about Moderna. Cruise lines were up very sharply. I mean, anything that could benefit from people getting that vaccine so they are able to go to a place like a Disney, uh, BK, um, benefited. Also, as Tim had mentioned, yep. Wells Fargo. I mean, that was up almost 10 percent today. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the thesis there is that you're going to have an economy that gets back on its feet a lot quicker than the market was pricing in, you know, just last week. At the same time, I think I'm more, more on Guy's side in that, you know, listen, I'm old enough to remember when China trade problems were, were an issue. You know, that was last Friday. That was last Thursday. Um, so this market can turn on a dime. Uh, it does feel like this rally today, while I understand why you have to buy in the stock market if you're an, a, an investor or a, a money manager, you can't miss a vaccine type of rally. That being said, there seems to be a lot of hope built into this. I'm not a scientist, not going to play one on TV, but all the work I did today tells me it's a long way from here to a vaccine, which means the market may indeed be a bit, a bit of ahead of itself. Contrary to popular belief, I am at heart an optimistic person. So I do want to believe that there is a vaccine out there. It will be found <laughs> and people will be able to, to receive this vaccine so they will be um, immune from the effects of the coronavirus. Dan Nathan, at the same time, and the stock market is a forward looking instrument. So why is it wrong? Why should it be doubted that this rally is believable? I mean, the, the market is simply looking ahead to that day when things go back to normal. What's so wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with it, Mel, is the fact that, you know, we just went from a period over the, I guess, the beginning of this year where unemployment was low single digits at 60-year lows. And now 
the best case scenario for the back half of the year is that it's going to be 10 percent maybe at its lowest and it's likely to stay that way i think one of the things that the market refused to kind of acknowledge of what powell said last night on that 60 minutes interview is that this is going to be a very long recovery maybe as long as the end of next year and those are the sorts of things where you know the market is not particularly pricing we are all optimists from the human perspective we all would like to see a vaccine the reality is that like all these guys have just kind of meshed this together here the likelihood of something being usable in a mass scale is not great and to tie it together with what these guys were saying about china the risk there is that the supply chain for such a vaccine comes through china in a big big way here we need to get along with them. We need to stop the blame. Listen, I, I think that China has, you know, they should accept a whole heck of a lot of blame for a lot of things in the world. But getting to DEFCON 5 right now, before we even have a sense for this thing, doesn't make a, a lot of sense to me right now. So to me, I just think that we're in a pretty perilous spot here. I think the markets, like you say, are looking ahead, but they might not be acknowledging some of the things that will be headwinds in the back half of this year. But despite some of the skepticism that our panel has uh, tonight or surrounding the vaccine fueled rally, we did want to ask them, what would you buy? What would you buy? The one trade that you would make if you were to believe that the vaccine is is on the way. So it's time to take your position vaccine edition and we'll kick it off with Guy. Well, along with this trade, I would have to buy myself, uh, what do they call that, the Dramamine or the Bonine? Because as you know, I suffer terribly from motion sickness. But I will tell you, Mel, because I know you're a fan, if you go on the New Jersey Turnpike and take exit 7A in Jackson, you will soon find yourself at Six Flags Great Adventure, not only in Jackson, but all over the country. Now, look, that stock has gone from 8 to 22, but still a meaningful short interest and there's a lot of ceiling above up back to 35. So if some magic vaccine comes out, everybody's going to be you're going to that New Jersey turnpike will look like the New York State Thruway in 1969 for Woodstock Melms, if you recall. I don't I haven't been a Six Flags and Senior Cut Day. I mean, it's been that long. Um, Tim Seymour, what's your <laughs> one vaccine <laughs> <cut>. trade? <laughs> There's no way you cut school, Mel, ever in your life. My one vaccine trade uh, is GM. So I, I think of the autos essentially as, as uh, airlines light in terms of how the market has looked at their free cash flow or lack thereof. Uh, the burn for GM that we learned uh, for 2Q is going to be somewhere between 7 and $9 billion. But what people don't understand is GM also, unlike Ford, is actually relatively close to free cash flow if you get SARS somewhere back to 12 or $13 million and we're... Uh, getting some guidance that mid-May uh, the annual auto sales number, which is essentially what we're talking about, is, is around 12 million. So I actually think that GM was closer uh, to neutral in terms of their cash burn. We know Ford uh, got a plant going today. I think the autos have been seen as essentially uh, burned to you know where. And I actually, as look, as our audience knows, I've liked GM and it hasn't been a great trade. But uh, as a company that was treated as if their credit was uh, a, a bad risk, and we've seen actually their credit improve dramatically, um, I think the equity be one of the first things to move very quickly and decidedly on a, you know, on a vaccine tomorrow. BK, Brian Kelly. Well, you know, for me, it's almost biologically impossible to be on the same side of the boat as the rest of the crowd. It seems to me that if we have a vaccine, you see everything that goes up that already went up today. So what you want to do is you actually want to sell into that rally. To me, I'd be selling biotech. And the reason why is everybody has been focused on this one particular problem, which means everything else has been put on the side burner. They got to ramp back up. It's going to take a while to get there. And there's probably going to be this rally into it. So I'm a seller of biotech on a vaccine. Somewhat contrary, but that's what I do. Hmm. Interesting. Dan Nathan, what do you say? Yeah, so to me, it would be the iShares, uh, the, the, the long-term U.S. Treasury uh, ETF. I would be selling that, the TLT. I mean, the rates obviously have been going down for the last year. The 10-year Treasury has seemed to have found a home somewhere about 60 bips. And I would think a vaccine might put the fact uh, of, of negative interest rates in this country off the table. You might see rates going back higher here. So to me, obviously, it's been a, a pretty decent trade to be long TLT, long U.S. Treasury, short yields. I would see that reversing if there was some confidence about a vaccine uh, in this year or early next.